Guten Tag and bienvenidos listeners and welcome to Uber Cinco, the podcast game show where we deep dive top fives. I'm Brian Ernst, your host for today's festivities, and in the den today is Mitch Brinkman versus Nathan Hennenfent. Today our contestants will reveal and defend their top five things that should only last a year. Strategically, we did not invite any critics of this show. But this is a significant episode for us. It's number 52. One of the longest creative commitments of our non-existent entertainment careers is here. The anniversary episode of Uber Cinco. According to the stupid tradition of anniversaries, we are supposed to celebrate with paper, which I assume is rolling papers, so smoke them if you got them. <laughs> Our first contestant is addicted to licking metallic surfaces in a post-vaccine world. It's Mitch Brinkman. How are you? Well, hello. Good morning. And how you doing? I decided to dress up. I wore my my dress sport shades for this episode. Um, I'm bringing a, a, a cool new uh, all-black look for this show, so I'm trying to trying to start a new thing here i'm i'm gonna stop talking thank you <laughs> all right neo or <laughs> kyle that lives behind the dumpster whatever you are <laughs> hey and his ch- free pizza yeah. is always in the dumpster at domino's just order it don't pick it up free pizza at the end of the night boom trick that saved you some cash there you go as we just lost our sponsor <laughs> domino's pizza uh <laughs> And his challenger is a man who literally told us he survives by smuggling uncut veggies into his gullet and pukes and shits them out as he is the <laughs> double-headed dragon today. It is Nathan Hennenfind. How are you? I feel absolutely terrible. Thank you. <laughs> um, I am. I uh, Yes, the, I am the double-headed dragon. I we're recording this at 9.40 a.m., and I was up all night with what I assume was food poisoning, so this is going to be the best episode ever. Every, mm-hmm. I'm just so excited for our audience to hear the coherent, uh, <laughs> wonderful thoughts that I'm going to put together today. <laughs> All I know is it worked. At least you got my fruit basket. So there we go. Uh, we're a bunch of dudes that like to get blown, blown to the moon, that is. So if you or a loved one is a fan, head on over to bizbear.biz to submit your suggestions. And for the love of God, you have three straight white males with a podcast, and none of you have asked us our opinion on anything yet. There is still a question field on bizbear.biz. We are dying to have our voices heard. Ask us a question if you need to. (laughs) And if you're new to the den, welcome and let us wake you up with a quick rundown of the rules. Each player in the den has spent time with today's topic, arranging their top five answers in order of importance. Those answers have been submitted to the host who will moderate the game, awarding points to the player with the most poignant answer. Starting with their number five choice, we'll move up the ranks until we reach each of their top answers. But if both contestants happen to have the same answer on their list, well, we have an Uber Uber stare You will hear the official Uber Cinco siren, and both players must reveal their answer and what number they ranked their submission. An Uber stare down is all or nothing, with one player earning three points. After all answers have been read, the host will reveal the final score. And as a reminder, don't forget to stick with us until the end of the show where I, Brian Ernst, will give you my Fast Five send-off where I'll rattle off a definitive list of the top five acceptable thermostat temperatures. And for those of you that have an investment in our investment, we have a no-hit Sherlock softball update for you in the seventh inning stretch just before the Fast Five. And the last of many announcements, I, the host, am entitled to institute a house rule for today's game. I made a request when this topic was assigned that you get weird with it. Bonus points to the weird at my discretion, so bring it. Nathan, you lost the pre-show Kentucky Derby and had to put down your beloved pony, Ginger Chariot. So in your time of mourning, you may go first. Oh, may she rest in peace. Uh (laughs) (laughs) my number five is tv dramas oh they should only last a year yep how (laughs) how many times does somebody recommend a show to you enthusiastically like oh you gotta watch this show it's so great you bridge it and then and then there's always that qualifier oh but in season four watch the first two seasons of blah 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 (laughs) but then is a blah 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 so you just put out the one season it's a standalone and you leave people wanting more you don't have any 
lose your where you're going uh game of thrones season eight and every you know or was it seven or eight where, where they ended what, what but they went off the rails yes but you just you ended after that first season people love it they're like oh god i just wish they would make one more and then so you can you can just do it at a, a rolling basis based on demand and how much money you're going to make and you can take a lot of time to make the next season actually worth everybody's uh you know anticipation and this is kind of how they've they've done it in in uh the uk like uh, or in europe where a season is like four episodes or three episodes Mm -hmm. instead of i mean can you believe like back in the the 90s and early 2000s TV dramas in the United States were 22 episodes a year. <laughs> like, I, I I don't know. Like, can you imagine trying to binge watch? I don't. I Mitch, you you said you you re or binge watched the the West Wing over the yeah. uh, the quarantine era, and that had to be like 20 episodes a season, right? That was it, it was yeah, 24 episodes a season, 42 minute 24. episodes. Four. That's yeah. That, it's just that that's unfathomable these days that just yeah. doesn't happen anymore um, i mean t- like like t- for easy like easier for them there wasn't always a coherent through line through each episode it's kind of like each episode had a little like this is the jackson cheese day and then maybe <laughs> one thing would happen that would carry through to the next episode but right like, th- they weren't trying to connect stories um because that'd be insane i think uh really tough really hard yeah well I, I mean i think the the best way to, to tell a story is to be as self-contained as possible uh and the the shorter the tv season the better if if you you if you decide you're gonna go like eight or nine seasons you're just setting yourself up for failure the best tv drama of all time in my opinion the wire even the the wire in the fifth season felt the final hurdle the fifth season is um it's it's fine but it it does not hold up to the first four so keep your tv dramas short like I am going to be keeping my answers short because I desperately want to go back to bed slash the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> the Wire, though, is one of those shows that people have been like, the first season's not that good, but if you can get through it, the rest of it's awesome. That, that's pretty much what I get every time someone tries to get me to watch The Wire. And that's why I haven't watched The Wire, because I went in cold watching those first two episodes once and I turned it off. Like I tried. I just it was I wasn't there. It, it was in the right headspace or whatever. It really takes it, its time that first season. You know, it really wants you to feel like you're sitting on duty with a cop, just like watching a house for six hours. You know, like, <laughs> okay, all right, let's, uh, okay, when's the when's the gunplay going to get here? Uh, when, when are the drugs going to come flying out the window? So, let's go. So maybe it's more like Game of Thrones than we'd like to admit, because to Nathan's point, uh, Daenerys Targaryen took seven seasons to walk 100 miles, and all of a sudden in that last one, she's flying around the world. So, yeah, I mean, pick a timeline and stick to it. So yeah. that's, that's what one point I will make about Game of Thrones is the George R. R. Martin hasn't finished the books and he yeah. won't, because what does he stand to gain from finishing them? Because in our heads, there is a better ending that he is going to write. That we're like, oh, well, if he just would have finished the books, everything would have been fine. Like, we would have known how it ended. So, like, anything he does is just going to be another disappointment. So, he always, yeah. if he doesn't finish any, anything, he's always the winner here. It's always, so, so anyways, anybody who's waiting for those books to get finished, it's not going to happen. It's over. As someone who downloaded a Kindle sample of one of them once just to see what they were like, I am not looking forward to that book coming out. (laughs) So, Mitch, I will go on to you for your number five. What you got here? Sure. Um, Mine is um, a little more headspacey, a little more highbrow, and that is reading a book. If you're taking Mm. more than a year to read a book, you should probably just stop the book and just forget it. Go on to a new book. You know, uh, institute rule where if you've read a hundred pages and you're not loving it, you're not feeling it. It's okay to put it down. You know, it's okay to not finish it. But to go back and try and figure out what happened in the beginning part, like, did the dog get the ball? Does the dog still like food? You know, does the dog <laughs> like water? And then you know, and, and you know, it's taking you a year to get to page twenty, and you got to go back to the first five pages. And be like, that's right. Spot loves to run. Spot likes his bones. Spot likes to dig. <laughs> I was gonna say, it, is, is, Mar- is so Marley and me, is Marley and me this hard of a list? <laughs> <laughs> it's just like it's so hard to remember what happened in the beginning if you let it sit for a year, or if you read really, really slowly. Um, 
but like but also like in in a in, in a larger sense though like i i finished this book called the black count it's an incredible book it's all about um alexandre dumas father he was the first black general in the french army basically a folk hero he could su supposedly like grab a um like a timber above his head like a like a, a support beam and lift himself and his horse up that's how strong he was probably apocryphal but those kind of incredible stories um fly around about this guy uh you know captured like five guys by himself with nothing but a sword and and a, and a belly full of vigor but so I started this book in 2014 and I was pushing through it. I was like, you know, it's one of those big, thick, like 800 pages. And then I put it down and I picked it up again, like finally three years later, maybe four years later and finished it. But I didn't remember anything that happened in the first half. So I was like trying to piece together stories and, and characters together uh, as I finished this book. And, and I could just tell, I was like, this book would have been so much better if I had just done it in a year. So even if you have to stay up late and and wait on the champagne on New Year's Eve, finish that book before the new year comes. I promise you it'll be so much better uh, than letting it wait. Um, or just don't read. Just put the book down and go play some video games. That's also uh, fun too. But do not let a, let a book sit for a year. Finish that thing. You'll feel smarter. You'll feel um, like a sense of superiority over your friends. Um, and, oh, and, we know. And family. Oh, do you, oh, oh, yeah. Um, so, uh, I mean, like, why else do you read, right? Why else do you read besides to, 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 <laughs> tell, to tell people about it? Um, and, and man, what fun are you on your birthday slash New Year's Eve as the guy sitting in the back <laughs> of speed reading trying to make his goal? <laughs> yeah, you guys, you guys, did you know Teddy Roosevelt had not four but five dogs that lived in the White House with him? And his favorite off, Tugger. Mitch. Okay, sorry. <laughs> we got fresh mozzarella sticks here, all right? And we don't need to deal with your boring ass. I love uh, that your right. go-to New Year's Eve item is fresh mozzarella sticks. Not like a jug of beer or a cold champagne or like LSD or like a bunch of marijuana. You're like, we what got the hell mozzarella else sticks. Absorb baby. all the booze. Like I need some. I need a lot of cheese to block me up. <laughs> Nathan maybe needs the same. All right. Uh, for this number five here, I, you guys are both getting two points. TV dramas, yes. Dude, books, whatever. We'll talk about books. <laughs> all right, two here, points all around. Question, question, question. Yes. If you. Um, in terms of a, a syndicated TV run, because I, I was going to put this on my list and I took it off last minute. If you have, let's say, 49 weeks in a year of showing reruns, right? Because you take out things for Christmas and whatever holidays. Yeah. So you say 49 times five. That's uh, what is it? That, that's almost 250 episodes. Is Should that be the cutoff of long running sitcoms or shows where like once you hit that point, like if you have more episodes than can show in a year, is that too much? Or is 250 episodes, is that already just an absolutely insane thing, even if you're pumping out like Two and a Half Men or Cheers or whatever? It depends. Are you the rerun watcher looking to have something constantly fill that primetime bubble after you get home from work that has something on the TV for you to watch? Or are you someone who doesn't want to pay for a streaming service and is trying to catch up on that show you never saw in exactly one year when you get home from work? I think the the need for the digested the digesting of that TV show is called into question here. That, that that's a great point. Also, if you're if if the thing you're looking forward to when you get home from work is catching up on Two and a Half Men, uh, read a book. Read a book. Uh, <laughs> much better time spent. Uh, yeah. Also. Um, uh, 245 slow math bonus yeah oh there <laughs> hey, I'll, give it, I'll give it to you today i was like yeah give him that bonus the, the, the double-headed dragon deserves that one for sure uh all okay. right uh that brings us on to our number four nathan take us away here all right i went with uh since already in my life i've been blessed beyond words as a sports fan with the michael jordan era bulls and with the Alex Ferguson run of uh, Manchester United. Uh, and I got my fill. And now I'm moving on. So I'm saying sports dynasties from now on should only last a year. Can you believe it? As soon as I got the list, I didn't think this would be the stare down. Wow. But wow. it is. Wow. Nathan, your number four sports dynasties is going against Mitch's number one. Mitch, wow. what do you have? 
I was I this is I'll just read what I what I wrote down a little bit and then I've got more thoughts. But um, my number one was a basketball dynasty. Air, double air quotes. Winning year in, year out, yawn. Call me when The Rock takes over the fourth sequel of the movie they make about the team. Um, that's what I'm starting <laughs> with. And so, yeah, Nathan, take it away, and, and then I'll, and then I'll uh, beat you uh, mercilessly. With my, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that definitely sounds like a better premise than I had. But essentially, <laughs> but yeah, I, I mean, as I said, I reap the benefits of sports dynasties, but now that I have had my fill, it's time for this stuff to stop. No more super teams. <laughs> There's no romance to it anymore. The best players just decide they're going to play, you, you know, whatever. Cristiano Ronaldo and Leo Messi have been playing for 15 years. They were the best two players. That, uh, enough. So we need to adopt the horse racing model <laughs> of... Uh, oh, God. Of, so, <laughs> oh boy. so basically... Horse horses run the the Kentucky Derby, the Triple Crown races when they're three years old, and then that's it. And then they send them away to a farm where they are basically paid to reproduce. <laughs> so we just everybody. Once you have a great year, you know Usain Bolt at the 2008 Olympics. It's like, well done, buddy. Great. Now you're heading off with all the other great athletes where you're just going to go reproduce with all the, the <laughs> I was other gonna say, imagine if we did that with our actual, every, we're just, we're just going to be breeding wonderful, amazing <laughs> sports stars in, in every sport. But then those, those next generation, it's just going to be a one and done. They get to age 22. They have a great year and then boom, they're out of there. We get a no, new person to fall in love with a new America sweetheart every, every year it's over. <laughs> I don't want to watch LeBron James in the playoffs for another 20 years. I want to have new, fresh faces. I got nothing else, guys. I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> Mitch, Mitch, take it away. I'm, I'm handing the baton to you. Yeah, no, uh, this is, I mean, this this comes out of, I had to watch my whole goddamn childhood as my Timberwolves would get swept out of the first round of the playoffs when it was best of five in the NBA first round playoffs. I want to I want to mention that and remind everyone um, and just watch Michael Jordan just like take that easy cakewalk to the finals year after year. Uh, because let's remember the Eastern Conference in the NBA in the 90s was the weakest it's ever been. They expanded to to 30 teams. They had they had not enough talent to fill all the roster spots. And Michael Jordan just got to lazily, um, you know, uh, pick off these 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 tiny little gnats of opponents. He was just tiny little tiny little <laughs> non real opponents. Oh, Reggie Miller, yeah, he was better than Michael, but also not that great of an opponent. <laughs> the greatest he ever went against also scored more points than Michael Jordan. Carl Malone, the mailman himself, he <laughs> showed up every single day. He didn't all of a sudden go. You know what? I want a year off to I don't know play baseball and like pay my way onto the White Sox double A team and uh, gamble around the world for a year. No, he kept showing up day after day and he wasn't rewarded with the, with an easy cakewalk in the West. He had to fight like a, like a warrior in the middle of the, the, the battle of uh, Mordor in game of Thrones right next to Frodo <laughs> and Jon Snow. You know, he was, he, and, and everything just, they just laid it at Michael's feet. They're like, Michael, please take it, take all this money. Nike money, Gatorade money, uh, you know. So I was so over it. Haynes, uh, Haynes what, what, money. You Haynes, the Haynes money. money. Yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, please, yes. Bring your mustache to the Haynes commercial, Michael. <laughs> we need it for marketing. Um, so I was so over dynasties as a kid. I'm still over them now. I think year to year, uh, uh, leaving it up in the air is great. Um, I, I, I also agree with you that today's super teams in the NBA, not awesome, not wonderful. Um, the Yankees always sucked, right? They're the worst. We hate the Yankees. Um, so yeah, it just, it, it just, it, it, it gets me going so hard. And I only wish that those five guys that delivered the pizza that night in Utah had finished the job, you know, stabbed him with a sharpened <laughs> Mormon cross, you know, it's Good like, Lord. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, that was extreme, I, but, I, but I'm going for the extreme here, okay? And I know, Brian, that you love Michael Jordan, but just know I'm going for it here. I'm, I'm, I'm going for the fucking glory, uh, which Michael was allowed to do very easily year after year after year, just blowing through tissue paper. 
I need to stop talking now. I'm sorry. I I just would like to point out that my solution was huh? to have these successful people go live on a compound where they could mate with other ridiculously good looking and in shape people for the rest of their lives with no responsibilities. And Mitch wants to murder them. So I yes. think. Well, no, no. There was only one guy, one guy that I advocated uh, for the doing away of. But um, at least I'm not here to be like, oh, let's treat these people like they're cogs in a machine to create a better national team of, of of sportsters and yes the u.s men's national soccer team you know they need some help so maybe you know uh that plan would help for them but i have one follow-up question Mitch. Yeah, you're, yeah. you're basically what you're describing is when you try and tear down michael jordan is that what happens off the court matters in, in your public opinion is that correct uh, and I, I didn't really mention anything about his off the court stuff, but I can. I mean, I can do that. Advertising. Oh, gambling. yeah, you're right. You're right. Okay. You're so right. that stuff matters to you? Well, no, 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 no. It's just that Carl Malone never took a day off to indulge himself in those. Um, Correct. He was too busy impregnating a 13 year old when he was 20 and not paying child support for life. So you lose the <laughs> stare down. Uh, this is going to Nathan for three wow. points. Wow. That was, there wow. you go. That went to some really dark <laughs> places. Wow. Well, if you're saying off the court matters, I read some things once and that's what I know about <laughs> basketball. So you picked the wrong one person I know about in basketball <laughs> outside of Michael Jordan as your defense, and it didn't work. Crap. So well, brings shoot. me great joy to give you a zero for your number well, one you greasy stumble. <laughs> <laughs> oh goddamn! Well, uh, you know that's that's a real bummer. That's a real bummer. Um, but you know what? I w w fun fact on the side. I found my Benny the Bull beanie baby when I was in Minnesota recently, and uh, <laughs> he's in mint condition, baby. So Papa's Papa's getting a couple grand coming his way. So, um, yeah. Well, you can you can use that in your legal defense after <laughs> they come and get you for threatening Look, to kill the mine, greatest mine's, basketball mine's player. Mine's literally time. right over there. Like I can see mine. It's <laughs> Mitch. Mitch, like a normal person, had put his away when he was a child. I'm 34 year old man, and I have it sitting on my TV stand. <laughs> Good old. You already won the stare down. Please don't make me. <laughs> Uh, Mitch, you actually need to go again here because we need to hear your number four. Yeah, sure. Um, I'm going to, and I, again, I'm going to fucking kill it, uh, obviously. So my number four. Can't wait. Yeah, great. Uh, is, and Brian, this one's an easy three points from you because you totally agree with me here. Um, and, and if you say you don't at the end, then you have lied. You will be a liar. Um, okay. So my number four is an unpaid internship. This should never last more than a year. If it's been if it's been ninety five Wednesdays and you're still getting you know five coffees each customized for uh you know senior people in your office uh, with with bagels and donuts as well, you have been there too long. You should have left. Uh, if you know, go get something that pays you. Go get something that uh, appreciates you. Um, go do something that you know can you move you forward. Um, I'm also at a loss for words today because I'm thinking about unpaid internships and it makes me so angry that they're that they exist in our world. And I know we've we've talked about this on a previous episode. And so I know Brian will agree with me here and I know Nathan will, will agree with me here. So this is like an easy knock it out of the park thing. Uh, if, if also don't do them outside of college, right? Like if, if you can avoid it, don't do that. Uh, I know that there are certain industries where they love the unpaid internship. And it's all based on people who can afford to do that. And like that's part of like the entry fee, if you will, um, to get into like niche niche industries. But fuck those people. Fuck that shit. Uh, God, I'm really swearing today. Sorry. Um, but uh, <laughs> it's just it gets me heated. It gets me heated. Um, perfect. Well, I one year unpaid internship working at like a zoo, right? Like helping the people vaccinate monkeys and clean penguins. That's a great unpaid internship for a little bit. You know? <laughs> I do agree. That's vaccinating that great. monkeys and cleaning penguins. Yeah. <laughs> the only two tasks that are reserved for the unpaid interns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Let's give them a medical, uh, uh, an actual medical inoculation that uh, doesn't require veterinary training and a little bit of Dawn soap to get the oil off the penguins that was accidentally spilled by Mike, the, uh, bad, the uh, uh, horrible janitorial staff employee, who of course was had barrels of oil in the penguin exhibit. <laughs> I, I do agree with you. Unpaid internships are stupid. I don't think you should ever take them, no matter what industry you're in. Yeah. Any company that offers an unpaid internship is a shitty company, in my opinion. Yep. Um. So I do agree with you. They should not last a year, but you shouldn't be taking them at all. That that's yeah. that's that's where I stand. What yeah, about the worst? I mean, I've, I've, there is no more finite resource in a person's life than time. Time right. is all we have. It's always running out and you're stealing somebody's time from them and not giving them anything in return. These things shouldn't also, exist at all. Oh, if you're shit. doing it for credit, it should be either a semester or a quarter. It should never yeah. be a year. Yep. That's Absolutely true. not. So, yeah, I because I agree with you, Mitch, you will get three points. But because I, I disdain the unpaid internship as a whole. I just want to go on record and tell everyone you are better than that. And don't you ever take one. Yes. Or I will disown you. Yes. All right. Oh. So Papa that, Bear. He's a proud yeah. Papa Bear. Yeah. <laughs> let, let it down the knowledge. Hi. Well, I was oh, I was looking at our uh, I was looking at our demographics chart uh, earlier sure. today, and ninety eight percent of our audience is nineteen year olds. That we are just huge with yep. the college crowd. Yes. Yep. Yeah. They love tuning into Uber Cinco. So mm -hmm. here's some great life advice coming to you from the elder statesman here. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thank God we did that like college campus recruitment deal where we just <laughs> did a booth and the, just handed out the, Uber Cinco tchotchkes. The there. three of us sitting at a card table in a, a rec center. Listen uh, to our podcast. <laughs> we got good ideas. You'll like it. It's comedy. The internet's the way of the future, kids. <laughs> Actually, All right. we, we, it'd uh, be great to have an unpaid intern to, to do our scheduling for us. That'd be amazing. <laughs> that actually sounds great. Let's get one. <laughs> I'm getting tired, you guys. I can't do this anymore. You know, all the guests we have with the same yeah three of us every week. All right. Uh, <laughs> Nathan, your number three, please. My number three thing that should only last a year is your midlife crisis. Oh. <laughs> oh, I was waiting for the ding. I thought we might. Oh. Have <laughs> On your 45th birthday, you are allowed to get three tattoos. You can sign up for CrossFit. <laughs> you can you can get a profile on one dating app uh, behind your spouse's back. And you can start wearing skinny jeans and a Kangol cap. But you get one year. The Kangol cap. And then, yeah. Yeah, the Kangol cap. It's yeah. classic. That's awesome. But then after, after one year, on your 46th birthday, you got to start wearing tweed jackets. You got to go to bed at 8 p.m the most uh, sexy TV show you could, you're allowed to watch is wheel of fortune. Just mm. no more, like no more trying to recapture your youth. It's pathetic. It's sad. Just embrace who you are. If you haven't figured out who you are by your mid midlife, it's, it's, it's one of two things. Either you don't like who you are and you need to learn to accept yourself. Or I can't remember what the second thing is. So we'll just say <laughs> that was the one thing. Um, you got to buy a, a two seater sports car. Yeah. <laughs> no, right. do with it. How to get rid of Miata. it within a year? <laughs> yeah, and, and, I got a Miata. My, I, I hear what, here was the, the second thing. It was somebody said this to me once. I, I I said, "Oh, I think I'm having my midlife crisis." And this friend of mine, who's one of the most sardonic people I know, said, "Was like, how do you know?" How do you know the middle of your life wasn't when you were 20? And I was like, wow, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good point. So anyways, yeah, midlife crisis shouldn't be a thing. Just, uh, yeah, if you're going to have one, you got one year and then move on. I believe I said something similar to myself on my 25th birthday. I mean, I'm like, I'm either a quarter of the way through a great life or halfway through a not so great life. <laughs> so we'll, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> I, I remember somebody on their 25th birthday said, oh, my God, I'm I'm halfway to 30. And I was like, no, you're five sixths of the way to 30. <laughs> you, are, you are really close. <laughs> oh, wait, quick math. That, that fraction is correct, Nathan. Wow. Plus one. Wow. What's what, what, what's more depressing during a 45 year old midlife crisis year, uh, along with like what you mentioned, the skinny jeans, the Kangol hat that you decide to to to, uh, to binge a show that makes you younger. Is it sadder if they're watching Big Bang Theory or How I Met Your Mother? 
Oh, Big Bang. Big yeah, Bang. I mean, Big Bang. <laughs> yeah. I think Big Bang. Well, well, I mean, Charlie Sheen and in, in how I... In, wait. Charlie Sheen? <laughs> you're talking, no, wait. I, you, you said, which show did you say? You said, oh, How I Met Big Your Mother. Big Bang Theory oh. and, the, and then How I Met Your Mother. Okay, or right, here, here. I he, thought you said Two and a Half Men, which is basically oh. just a midlife crisis in TV show four. Yes, yes, True. yes. Yeah. Which one's sadder now? This King of Queens or Yes, Dear? <laughs> King- I like Yes, Dear. <laughs> this- yes, Dear was good. <laughs> <laughs> this is I want to I want to share with the listeners. Me and I Mitch had a thing like people. for <laughs> yes, for a few for a few years. Like back in the day, uh, I don't know, like maybe eight or nine years ago. The, the and I think still even to this day, like on the CTA buses, the Chicago yeah. buses, they'll they'll have like these advertisements, or there will be billboards. Like it's like, oh, King of Queens will be on at six thirty tonight, like whatever. And yep. Mitch and I would take pictures of them and text to each other, like, oh, make sure you're home by six thirty. We gotta make sure we watch King of Queens. And uh, it was funnier in my head. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> on that same point, I also love how Jerry Seinfeld's headshot from '96 is his eternal like life photo. Oh yeah. It has to still be on ads all over Chicago because of WCIU. Yep. It, it, it's just a close up shot of Jerry's eyes being like, huh? like looking at the camera and you're like, oh. I know what that is. That's Seinfeld. And I have to be home by 10 30 central uh, to, to, to catch the, the Chinese restaurant episode. It's got to happen. Um, yeah. It's a good one. The, all right. my, uh, my favorite thing yep, in the I, car I, I, was to yell out as if something was wrong and be like, you guys look. And then everyone would be like, what? And be like, King of Queens is on tonight at 9 30. <laughs> you see, I use the you. Put it in the calendar. And they'd be like, fuck you, Mitch. Let's, uh, okay. Sorry, Brian. Keep, 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 keep. I like rolling. King of Queens too. <laughs> all right. No, number three. Got him. Mitch, yeah. your number three. Sure. Um, my number three, and this should only last a year, and after a year, it, it must be burnt, you know, uh, from dust it, it came to whence it goes, or whatever that saying is, uh, and that is... Close enough. <laughs> preferably into the fireplace, if you have one. And that is crafting oh. a Christmas list to send to Santa. Every year, <laughs> every year, you make a new list, you know? You make a brand new list... You build it all year long. You send it off to Santa with a stamp and a little mini candy cane inside so he can suck on that when he's reading your list and making sure you get the toys you need. But every year, you need to destroy that list and make a new one because otherwise it's not magical. If you if you bring it over year to year, if you're an industrious little kid and you're you have a Google Doc and you're like tracking you know your gifts over the years, there's no magic in that, and you won't get the gifts you want. You have to start a new list. Every year on a kind of old timey paper, if you got it, um, use your calligraphy skills. If you don't know what that is, Google it, figure it out, get some cool markers. You have to decorate it as well. But this list does not, it does not go from year to year. You know, you have, you have your 2020 Christmas list. You know, number one is a pony. Number two is a wooden pony. Number three is a pony shirt. You know, that's for just that year. You don't get to bring it over to the next year. You know, you, you don't get to 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 uh to, to bring the, the like the PTO over to year 2021 doesn't work like that. You gotta make a brand new Christmas list every single year or else Santa will disappoint you and you won't get what you want. And uh I I I, I say this from experience because um I didn't make a new list uh every year until I turned eleven and so I I was real disappointed as a kid. And I never got the, uh, <coughs> sorry. I never got the, I never got the, oh, I never got the, 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 the pony with the braided hair when I was a kid. And I really, I really, I really, really wanted it. I never got it. So, and Santa let me down. That's what my parents said. They said, Santa couldn't get it for you. It's all Santa's fault because you didn't make a new list every year. So oh, that's my number three guys. Mitch, wow. this won't, this this might not make you feel any better, but I actually did have a pony growing up. His name was Bucky. <laughs> so suck on that. <laughs> you get the you get the championships. Of- you get the pony. You get the oh, oh. I hate you. It was Nathan's it. job to so file much. down his two front teeth every week. <laughs> I didn't I didn't do that, but I I did uh, I did clip his uh, his hooves from time to time. Ugh. that was not fun. Sounds sensuous. 
<laughs> wait, like nail clipping in wait, the dark. <laughs> hold on. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. You actually had a pony? Yeah, no, this is you legitimate. You son of a, a bitch! I thought you were joking! <laughs> no, no, I thought you were just trying to pour some vinegar in my wound or salt. His, the... God, his I'm name so was, angry. His name was Bucky. He, he lived to be 30 years old. He, we had a little chariot. He would pull us around and uh, we would... What? It, it wasn't long before we were too big to ride on, on the saddle on him. But yeah, we had we had Bucky. And he was very close friends with Hunter, the beagle, who would sleep nestled next to him. Uh, in the in the shed in my perfect little Norman Rockwell painting childhood. Oh, yeah, I had a pony. I had a pony. Deal with it. I oh had a God. pony. <laughs> I have never been. I this is the most I've ever been hurt and affected by an Uber Cinco number here. I am. <laughs> I cannot believe what the fuck you had a fucking pony. You son of a bitch. God, I'm yeah. so jealous of you. <laughs> she. I, I hope Bucky bucked you off at some point. And you hurt your wrist or you know. No, that never happened. He was a docile creature. <laughs> Did he ever like a riding pony, Mitch? He was a show pony. <laughs> oh my god, I am so. Oh, I should have made a new list every single year. I, I, I would have had the magic. I could have gotten the pony. <laughs> I remember I always gotten the razor scooter I asked for, so my list was filled. Wow. Thanks, Santa. I never got a scooter. I, I just either. wrote the I wrote the magic right. Yeah, you did. And I followed the rules. Also, I I used to go into my mom's um, sock drawer and I found her receipt envelope, you know, back in the 90s when people had to keep receipts. And uh, so I, instead of looking for presents, I'd just look at her receipt envelope and I found out all my gifts before I got them. Oh, I was such you a little <laughs> shit. I, I sapped all the magic out of out of that season for a couple of years there. That's I mean, I so. I deserved it. Your favorite season. I know. You took remove the magic purposefully. I know. I know. I God. Oh, I'm I'm getting real. This is sad. I'm this is sad. Let's <laughs> let's move on. I'm getting too sad. <laughs> oh my oh, god. I'm sorry, Number Santa. Trees. I'm sorry. Uh Nathan, you're getting the two points of the midlife crisis, of course. And Mitch, that's one point. You're sucking the magic out. Why? <laughs> It's the best part of the of Christmas. I know, I know. I just was such a curious child. I needed to know. I don't know why, but I needed to know. Oh God! Wait till the day you have kids and they start stealing your email password for your Amazon. <laughs> yeah, and then you'll know how it feels. The, the, uh, I, Nathan, uh, uh, yeah. I would say the worst year I found out I, I was getting this video game. Uh, and be, this is back when like they made two competing college football video games at the same time. And my mom got the wrong one and I was really sad, but I couldn't tell her because, you know, I I knew I couldn't do that because then I have to like let her know that I saw the receipt. So, yeah. Uh, so you were depressed from the day <laughs> school let you out until <laughs> after Christmas? Yep. 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 Uh, uh, I'm such a shit. Well, such a shit. Well, that's what you get. Yep. Yep. And then what else we get is Nathan's number two. What you got for us? Uh, Your career. Should only last one year. Everybody's career, <laughs> one year, and then you have to switch and you have to start a new career. This is going to give you perspective. This is going to make a much more harmonious society. Everybody is going to understand and have empathy for their fellow passengers to the grave. If you for a year, it's like for a year. Sure, you're a high rolling investment banker for a year, but then the next one, you're in the service industry, bussing tables. You're a, you're a grocery clerk. You're a bus driver. You you get the highs. You get the lows. You have to do everything. And then you're going to have a lot more respect for all the people that you meet in your day-to-day -day life. And uh, you're going to you're gonna tip better. You're going to uh, understand that your, your server at the restaurant might have had a rough day and it's been super busy. So that's why they got one little tiny thing on your uh, order wrong. And you're going to let it go. It's uh, going to be a much... Oh, God. Sorry, guys. I'm just trying not to shit myself. <laughs> <laughs> I could see the tension in your face. I was like, oh, this guy's uh, about to explode here, dude. But... <laughs> oh, I feel like garbage. Um, but yeah, you get you get my point. You do everything yeah. for a year and then everything's better. Yes, that's <laughs> basically that's it. I tried. <laughs> so what, what what is the what is the transition like from the year you're like a union electrician to the next year where you're like a brain surgeon. No, like, no training. Well, the brain surgeon one, we're going to do training. The brain surgeon <laughs> no thing, training. we're going to do training. Yeah, we're going to do training for that. But yeah. uh, 
But for the the lower skilled stuff, no, you just boom day one, you're in there. You have to learn the hard way. It has to be as difficult as possible. You need it's, this is all about building up empathy. So if your first day is an absolute nightmare, that's all the better. And then you're gonna get really good at it. After a year, you're really good at it. You start to kind of like it, and then out you go onto the next. As long as I can get a list of which hospitals these people will be working at at the time I need life-saving surgeries, I will <laughs> actually to be to your point, everyone will be new at the hospital at January 1st. So if you get sick earlier in the year before anyone's had this time I'm, to learn, <laughs> I'm 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 starting to realize I may not have thought this through. <laughs> <laughs> well, while you're, while you're clenching uh, your sphincter, let's move on to Mitch so we can see what his number two is. Yeah, my my number two is, and this would probably, this is more damaging, I think, when you're younger, but um, this is to, like during college, if you will, but this is to carry on um, an ambiguous sexual relationship that should not last more than a year. <laughs> um, th- this is when you have a, a, a sexual relationship with someone, uh, maybe you're, you're, you're stupping uh, a couple times a week. Maybe it's once every couple weeks. Maybe you're you're texting during the day, and you're friends. You're friendly, but it's never official. You n- no one ever knows where they stand. No one has the guts to come out and say, "Hey, I like you. I think we should be exclusive, or whatever." But you just kind of keep it going because it's easy to maintain. Uh, you know, w- without any real commitment, you can just pop by. You know, after you're out with your friends, you just pop by. Ding, ding, ding. That's a that's a knock on the window. Ding ding ding. Um, and then they're like, "Yes, come Got in, it. come in, caller." And then you go in and you 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 have you have your um your shtup sesh. Uh, but it, when this when this goes on <laughs> for more than a year, this this can cause um a, a loss of confidence. I think when when you don't know where you stand. Um, you can you can forever mentally uh, fuck with someone's head uh, where, where where they think this is how they should be treated in a relationship. Um, so I think these carrying these on for longer than a year I think can be dangerous, um, or it should last a year. And just find a new person then to to um to go have your uh, midnight uh, stippy stippy with you know uh, because why not try new stuff uh, as as we're learning from Nathan's uh um, everyone switches jobs every year thing too. So um, just like jobs switch. Um, I don't want to say holes, but like sexual partners. <laughs> yes. uh, I didn't say that. No, no, I didn't say that. I said, I, I don't, I don't want to say that. I don't want to say that. So I said partners, sexual partners. Um, yeah. So I think that that's a good thing. Yeah. When, when it's, and this is not an official relationship, you know, not, a, not official. This is when it's just kind of up in the air. Um, no rules kind of thing. Um, when you're just, you know, stupid when it, when the stup time comes up, you know, and you're like, let's stup. So, I think the world would be an interesting place if both of your number twos were implemented at the same time. (laughs) Every January 1st, you get a new job and a new partner and you just got to figure it out. (laughs) This, this also reminds me, uh, up until it was like, like 19, uh, was it 30 something or, or 20 something, uh, in New York city, everyone moved every single year. And so back in like the late 1800s, when there's, infested with roaches and shit ever everyone just pull their matches out in the street burn them and then go find a new place to live every single year you moved and everyone moved on the same day can you imagine that fucking chaos i cannot even like wrap my head around that um you know and in a time when everyone just lived in like a wooden shack you know tossed their shit yeah, out the window that's... so yeah that's the worst thing i've ever heard that yeah. sounds like such a nightmare yeah check it, it out i called it's something insane. very very creative, like moving day. Yes, it was called moving day. I think it was. I think it was May first yeah, okay. or April first or something like that. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. Why are we the? Su- why are we a superpower? <laughs> I don't understand. This country. <laughs> All right, uh, Nathan, for your. You're getting one point. I don't. I don't understand how this is gonna work. <laughs> and for Mitch. I was only going to give you one point, too, because it sounds crazy. But, I mean, you said shtupin' so many times. Yeah. That gets you two points. Yes. I like that phrase. Sh- to shtup. Shtup. Uh, Mitch, you lost the Uber stare down for your number one. Yep. So that is zero, yeah. which leaves us with Nathan. What is your number one thing that should only last a year? The awkward stage. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, man, you, I- you enter the awkward stage and you're supposed to get out of it. 
I am 34 years old. I still cannot grow a beard. So I am still in the awkward <laughs> stage. We're going on year like 23. I remember when I was when I was in sixth grade, I could I could palm a basketball with two fingers because my hands were the same size they are now as a fully grown six foot three man. But I was five foot two and the rest of me looked like I was six years old. And then I had these enormous mitts on me and my voice dropped. So I was walking around with these huge hands and I talked like this. And some of the high schoolers jokingly would call me Barry White because I had this this low voice coming out of this little elf's body and i was like well With banana hands yeah i was like well this will be over in a couple of years and 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 i somehow i i still haven't even like i have gray hair coming in like a plenty yet still can't grow a beard the awkward stage has never fully passed me by uh we are in the the fourth decade of it because 98 <laughs> was when it started so 90s 2000s says 2020 i'm in the fourth decade of the awkward stage why couldn't have just been the one year like everybody told me it was gonna be i guess it's just this is just my life the whole awkward stage when you when you go to the the cemetery to pay your respects to me after i am gone is you know it's not gonna say 1986 to blah 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 it's just gonna say nathan hennenfent the awkward stage and that's that's my life so (laughs) one year would have been nice that's i'm done or going to a cemetery and not the dump because I thought you just wanted to be thrown in the trash. Well, ideally, yes. <laughs> this is this is assuming my loved ones go against my wishes and don't just toss me in the trash. <laughs> Which, wow, this is the darkest episode we've done in a long time. <laughs> is there? It, we were due. It, we were due for the, it. There's nothing more awkward than you, you you bring your coffin to the dump. They 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 throw it on the pile and then it lands just so and the coffin pops open. Your body rolls out and like onto like. A, <laughs> <laughs> and it's just open to like the birds shit. it's like that shitty job trick <laughs> and the rest of the film where he exactly. slides out the back yeah. <laughs> man for that image alone uh, Nathan's getting at least two points um, wow. wow there was a lot there's a quick math bonus Yep. there were some other things there there's a, there's a lot of things that happened here today yeah. uh, Mitch you are getting uh, plus two points uh, uh, for for your up in number two thank <laughs> because you. that I thought that was the weirdest one and I kind of liked it yeah, so that brings you to ten points total for the day, but that does not compete with Nathan's twelve oh, points. Crap, Nathan, you are the victor of things that should only last a year. <laughs> it was your flu game. Yes, it you was. won. <sighs> yeah, this is I'm. I always love spending time with you guys, but I'm real glad this episode's over because I got some stuff to take care of. <laughs> Did you- well, it ain't over yet because as mentioned earlier, this brief moment before the Fast Five is our Uber Cinco seventh inning stretch. Uber Cinco is the proud sponsor of the No Hit Sherlock softball team out of Elmhurst, Illinois. Let's see how our beloved Baker Street Sluggers did. Slide, zip, nipple, tickle. What a week on the road for the Sherlocks. Defense took the wheel as several flies were sent straight to Allison's sticky trap at third. A double from Jim, ain't no jive, Turkey Murphy. And back-to-back sister singles from Becky and Amanda put the Sherlocks in a comfortable lead. Several unexpected but deserved injuries required a call-up from the Miners. Kyle, hey, Mr. Wilson! Tickled everyone's pickle with a valiant performance by the rookie from Scott's Pet Shop in Westchester. And who was that we saw making their season debut? Former team owner and roster aficionado Michael Rigatoni Rigatano stepped on the diamond after a very messy and very public underground fish fighting scandal. From goldfish to golden touch, we'll see how this veteran bagsmith fares the rest of the season. Sherlock's clinched an 8-4 victory over the no-nos. Did that, did that team name oh. itself after Nathan's term for uh, genitalia? Yeah, I, I, God, I only hope so. The no-no parts? That means our sponsorship <laughs> is working and people are listening to the show, yes. renaming their softball mm-hmm. teams. We are taking over the world wow. with our sports, poli- sports portfolio one team <laughs> at a time. 
All right. And we cannot leave today without my fast five, which of course is the top five acceptable thermostat temperatures. Number five, 70. Number four, 62. Number three, 64. <laughs> number two, 65. Number one, 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, yeah. That's this edition of Uber Cinco. Fresh from the salon named Ginger Quaff has been... Mitch Brinkman. <laughs> and from behind the shed with old playboys and corn husking lotion has been... <laughs> Nathan Edinson. <laughs> and I have been Brian Ernst. And as BizBear always says, no, Pepsi is not okay. Auf Wiedersehen and adios. You've just listened to Uber Cinco, a production of UBK Studios. Subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you get your fine podcasts from. If you like what you hear and want to support the show, please visit our Patreon site at patreon.com slash UBK Studios. Every little bit helps us keep the lights on and the bill collectors at bay. Keep tabs on us on all the social media at UBK Studios, and most importantly, subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can see that we really are just a bunch of good Midwestern boys. Yeah.